Well, hello. Today is day 129, May the 9th. For those of you doing the one-year Bible study readings with us, that's going to be 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1, through chapter 7, verse 17, John chapter 6, verse 1 through 21, Psalm chapter 106, verse 13 through 31, and Proverbs chapter 14, verse 32 through 33. Now I want to encourage you guys, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Let's go ahead and get started on a reading plan. If you're not in one already, get started on one. I, I was talking to a guy a couple months ago, and, and he's, he's doing a one-year study through the New Testament. That's pretty cool. It, it goes a lot slower than we're able to go through the whole Bible, and man, he's able to get a lot through that. So find something. Uh, easy way to do that is the free Bible app. It's uh, the U version or the Bible app or whatever you want to call it. You just go in there and they've got Bible study plans. You, you just search it. You can find one to your liking. If you want to join us on the one year Bible, just jump in where we're at and keep going with us. And then once you get to this time next year, um, you, you're, you're already done with it all. So, um, it, it, it'll be groovy. Just just jump in something. Today I want to do John chapter 6, verse 1 through 15. This is, I, I told you guys at the start of John, that there are seven miracles recorded by John. Um, that he talks about in John 20, verse uh, 30 through 31. This is, this is uh, the, the signs he selected to record that we might believe uh, that Jesus is the Christ, and through believing we can have eternal life. So, um, that's, that's, this is number four of those seven signs. Um, John chapter 6, verse 1 through 15, and it goes, After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the sea, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him, because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, um, and seeing that a large crowd was coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so all these people may eat? Now, I'm just going to throw this out there. When God's asking a question, he's not asking it because he needs the answer. He knows the answer. He's asking it so that we can engage in a conversation with him and start thinking about things we haven't even thought about yet and start seeing him do things and give answers that we never have expected. Um, so, right here, none of these disciples are thinking about feeding them. And all of a sudden, Jesus sees an unspoken need. He sees the need of the people to be fed. And he says, so, guys, Philip, what are we going to do about this, Philip? Let's, let's keep going here. Uh, verse 6. He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them um, to get a little. So, a denarii, that's, that's going to be a day's uh, wages. So he's saying, if we worked... 200 days, we wouldn't have enough money to feed these folks. Verse 8. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? And he said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in that place, so the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And then they had gotten their fill. He told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. There's, there's uh, three mindsets that I want to show you here. Uh, one is Philip. 
Jesus asks, what, how are we going to feed these people? Philip's like, ah, God, we, we can't do this. Not happening, not possible. Second mindset is Andrew. Maybe we can do this. I mean, we've got this boy here with some loaves and fish. I mean, there, maybe. Philip, not happening. Andrew, maybe. The boy, here, Lord, have it all. Have everything I've got. From the faith of the boy's heart, there was an abundance. Twelve baskets. There's twelve apostles, twelve, twelve disciples at this time. Twelve disciples. One heaping basket for each one of them that struggled with their faith. You see, God wants to take your faith of just giving Him everything you have. And He wants to use that to create an abundance in the lives of those around you. You may not feel like you've got much. You don't have all the Bible wisdom or Bible verses memorized. You don't even have a Jesus bumper sticker. <laughs> but, you know, He wants to use you and he wants to use what you do have. See, Jesus can use even the least to do the most amazing things. So I just want to challenge you with this today. Give it all to the Lord. And sit back and be amazed at the abundance that he does in the lives of those around you. Take care of yourselves out there.